Mentorship is all about working on technical projects. Mastermind is all about leading technical projects, digital transformation initiatives. Uh, so today we got the IO Link Master from Pepperell and Fuchs. Previously, uh, this device actually was made by Comtroll, still branded by Comtroll, uh, purchased by Pepperell and Fuchs a couple of years ago, and they've made a great integration so far. I actually really love the way this device looks. It's got a nice rugged form factor, um, you know, pretty solid. It is a plastic build, but good news on that, it's going to keep the cost of this device low. Um, and then these uh, terminal blocks are the push. These are kind of these push-in, push-in type. Push that in with the screwdriver, plop the wire in. We got two, get Ethernet one, Ethernet two, so two main ports on there, and a total of eight IO link ports. You could hook up to eight devices on here. The guys and gals from Pepperell and Fuchs did send me two devices, a pack of cabling with, I think this is like that M12 connector, Ethernet cable, switch. We also got a power supply as well as a little jumper cable to power from this guy to this guy. So um, let's go over the hardware specs and then in a little bit we're gonna plug this, wire this bad boy up, take a look at the software, and then we'll finally, last but not least, we'll go into the pricing and what our final thoughts are for this device and where we see it being used in industry. So <clears throat> hardware specs, we'll go over the detailed hardware specs uh, I'll put it up on the screen here now, but uh, it's made by Pepperell and Fuchs. Um, the, it has an Ethernet IP and Modbus TCP OPC UA connectors branded onto it, uh, but as I'm also being told that it also supports MQTT and going to support Sparkplug B, uh, similar to like the IFM I ILO Link Master in that in that sense. So um, the back of it does have a really nice spring-loaded uh, DIN rail mount. Um, and then as well as on the sides, you've got your terminal block labeling. So you can kind of see what each terminal block is, as well as on the other side. It's got a default IP address, as well as a serial number and MAC address right there on the side. Overall, this device is pretty simple, uh, straightforward, eight ports, powered up, two ethernet ports. Um, let's go ahead and wire this up and get, get, take a look at the software and see what this thing does. All right guys, now that we've got the IO Link Master all powered up, let's plug it into our laptop um, and see if we can connect to it with its default IP address. And let's take a look at the software. After this, we'll get into pricing and our initial thoughts and impressions on what this device should be used for. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our network settings and we're gonna set a static IP address to our LAN adapter here. Here you can see it has completely the wrong one. So we'll go to advanced, we'll go to static manually, and we'll go ahead and 192.168.1.249. And we're gonna subnet mask this as 22255.0, and we'll do no router. So now that we're on the same subnet, and we have an IP address that's on the same LAN space as the IO Link Master, let's see if we can connect to it. 
put a 192.168.1.250. There it is. So this is uh, the default IP address. Here's the home screen with some system information. Let's blow this up a little bit right here. Um, up here on the top right, up here is like a model number that's also written on the device. Uh, let's head over to diagnostics and see what's going on with this guy. So here it's saying all of the IO link ports are inactive and they're in an initialization state. We could stop live updates or we could re reset statistics here. This looks like a pretty good screen for looking at your IO link. Then you have your Ethernet IP diagnostics, Modbus TCP, and then the OPC UA. And I like that the OPC UA server is disabled by default. <laughs> Moving to the configuration, um, here's where all the settings are. Now, it's interesting that I was able to, it looks like I was able to log into this device without a password for the very first time, um, but it looks like it, it might prompt me or I might have to prompt myself to change the password here, but we'll see in a second. So um, again, here's the default configuration as well as all the configuration settings for Ethernet IP. Um, if you wanted to hit this, I don't know why you would, but if, in case you wanted to hit this with a Modbus TCP, you can do that. Um, OPC UA server again. Um, not seeing the MQTT settings here, but I, I do believe that's coming, or maybe we do have to uh, firmware update this. We'll, we'll find out on that in a second. But Jason Bean, who I've been talking to from Pepperon Fuchs, has been nonstop talking about all the improvements that they've been doing to this device. So, um, you know, miscellaneous configuration. And then there's a load and save configuration files. So you can save all this data to a file or load it again, that's pretty cool. Or you can clear the settings back to default. There's also um, the option to clear all the IO, IODD files. These are like the IO link configuration files, IODD. For each one of these you know, devices, you're gonna need like an IODD file. What's cool about that is this, this has the ability to like upload the IODD file to the device over IO link. So, um, Advanced. Um, this is pretty cool. You've got some different uh, software images, applications, uh, application versions. So this is probably like for tech support in case they're trying to troubleshoot something. You've got different accounts. Here's where, here's where it's showing me that admin has no password. I can set it if I want to. I'm going to go ahead and not set it. I actually like that. It makes it easier to get started in configuring it. Um, just make sure to set it if you are using it in a production environment. Log files, pretty self-explanatory. And then you've got your licenses. So here's all the licensing that they've used to make this possible, or spark plug. All right, so attached devices, interesting. Okay, so this is more configuration about the devices. Instead of the, this device, configuration about your sensors. So this is where you would upload your user IODD files. That's what I was talking about earlier for each of the devices on each one of these ports. Those IODD files is, is essentially how it knows what, what information is available on this device. Because remember, we're communicating not just the analog value over this three wire uh, device with you know, power, on, power on two and then you know, communications on another. So, but basically the IODD file tells us what parameters we have, how to communicate with it, um, different things like that. So you're gonna wanna get that all set up here, support, Pretty self-explanatory. So yeah, this is basically the software interface for this device. It's pretty self-explanatory. One of the things I said I do like is that there's no default password right off the bat. You can get right into it. it has the IP address pretty much labeled right there for you. Uh, it has a great look and feel of the software. That is important, especially with newer products coming on the market. The look and feel of your, uh, of your web interface and your product does matter. It needs to be easy to use. And it looks like this is very straightforward, easy to use. I got it set up in about five minutes. In the next video, we'll see if we can actually plug these into the IO Link Master and see what we learned from, from that ex experiment. But in this video, we we're just kind of going over our initial impressions. So let's go back to the studio. Let's wrap up the software portion and we'll talk about our final impressions. All right, guys, we're gonna talk about the pricing. So I don't have the exact pricing on this model, but what I do have is pricing on their IO Link starter kit. Yep, that's right. 
a lot of uh, industrial automation companies in the space have realized the importance of education and outreach, and they're starting to create starter kits, IIoT starter kits, very similar to like the PLC Next starter kit or the Opto 22 Groove Learning Center. Petrol and Fuchs is gonna be creating and sending you guys, the community, IOLink starter kits. Now, they're gonna be offering this at a very significant discount. Because of that, um, if you guys do wanna purchase the IOLink starter kit, we will let you guys know right the second that it's available. Jason said he's gonna let me know, and I'll put a link below. You guys can fill out that form and I'll email you the second that this IOLink starter kit goes for sale, right around the $750 price point. It's gonna include the IO Master and then also hands-on stuff that you can actually play with. So it's an incredible value. It's sure to sell out. So if you are interested in getting the IOLink starter kit, definitely fill out that form below. I'll email you with the link to purchase it right when it becomes available. So who's this for? Manufacturers, particularly that, that have a lot of sensor data that wanna be able to um, add, add sensors to their equipment without having to go into a PLC. They wanna be able to plug, you know, they wanna be able to go sensor into infrastructure or sensor to cloud. This device gives you that opportunity to be able to do that. What IOLink does with the device, being able to get all those additional parameters, that's gonna really come in handy to machine learning and AI. Remember, industrial internet of things, uh, all data can be turned into information. And you, the system integrator, you know, what's important to you may not be important to someone else or vice versa. So it's important that you do not make assumptions about how the data will be consumed. And IOLink right now, someone asked me, what's the adoption of IOLink? I've seen a couple of slides where they're in a very exponential growth curve where the number of these devices are doubling each year. So that's pretty impressive. Um, it's pretty standard. There's, there's a lot of different vendors that support IOLink. Uh, Pepper and Fuchs happens to be one of the best in my opinion because Comtrol, the company they purchased, actually created, you know, they created the first IOLink master. Uh, initially, they were actually white labeling it and selling it to other companies. So if you were buying an IOLink master from another company, you were probably getting it from a Comtrol or, you know, Pepperell and Fuchs. So definitely recommend this product. Definitely take a look at IOLink. We will maybe do uh, an IOLink series if, if there's a, a demand for that. So. Uh, let us know if you guys would be interested in that. Again, links below to be first to notified or if you're watching this video after the fact, links to purchase down below. See you guys in the next video, peace.